What is going on, family? Welcome, welcome to another great episode of the Arrington Gavin Show. This is the show where we discuss trending news and thought-provoking topics from the fields of politics, sports, pop culture, and so much more. Look, I'm so excited to be joining with you uh, on this great day. I uh, just want to kind of follow you up uh, with um, some awesome news. Uh, I, as you guys know, I am uh, run a nonprofit, the Rugged Evolution Foundation, which our main focus is uh, – giving back, uplifting our community through our youth um, and really with uh, educational tools, resources, things that they need to help benefit them uh, education wise. Because when inner city kids, uh, excuse me, well, really uh, underprivileged kids, uh, they don't have much. Right. They don't have much. And it's difficult for them to help motivate them, help per, um, push them forward to uh, uh, to finish school, to succeed in life and all the above. So. To say all that, uh, the Rugged Evolution Foundation, we always put on some local events that can help uh, uh, build proceeds towards that foundation in this uh, most recent time. Uh, as you know, it is the month of May, and we had a Mother's Day tribute show entitled A Toast to Mom. Uh, it was hosted by my dear friend, Emmy-nominated uh, journalist uh, of uh, Ashley Smith. She is the um, anchor for our um, ABC affiliate news, WVEC Channel 13 News Now. Um, she is awesome. She killed it. She did an awesome job uh, uh, hosting this event. Um, we had another good friend of mine, uh, DJ Scandalous of WNSB Hot 91.1 FM. Uh, he was on the ones and twos throughout the whole event, did an awesome job. Uh, you can tune into his show every uh, let's see monday through fridays from 2 to 6 p.m um and ashley is a part of the i want to say the morning crew yeah she's a part of the morning team but she does an awesome job uh with 13 news as well been there for over 10 years um and then we had our entertainment we had country music superstar miss roberta lee she opened up the the the, the show with some great uh, music from her uh, latest album too much of a woman she also brought her lovely daughter vanessa who uh who did one whole song i'm talking she's 10 by the way voice is sharp as i don't know what and she just she she destroyed it i mean it it was it was a beautiful beautiful evening then of course we had to bring out the last what uh comedian sherry priester boss comedy queen miss sherry priester and then headlining was a another another dear friend miss steph she goes by steph funny steph funny uh she destroyed standing ovation at the end and it was funny because we had so many hiccups throughout that show. First of all, I'm a nervous dude, okay? I get nervous uh, over everything. Uh, this was an event that was planned months, months in advance. Usually, we sometimes even plan the year before, just saying, okay, what are we going to do this year? What are we going to do that, that, and yada, yada, yada. And so, we, this was, you know, months, months in advance. So, of course... The week of, you get nervous. You're like, oh, my gosh, how are we doing with ticket sales? How are we doing with ticket sales? And, y'all, so I live in the uh, Hampton Roads, Virginia area. So I, I'm, I'm a native of Chesapeake, Virginia. But the Hampton Roads area consists in Chesapeake, Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Hampton, Portsmouth, uh, I believe Newport News. I believe that's uh, – oh, and Suffolk, in Suffolk, Virginia. So – in Hampton Roads, Hampton Roads locals tend to they they're 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 work in progress, but they really need to improve when it comes to supporting local things, local uh, uh local um fine arts, local businesses, all of the above, local community uh, uh uh functions, just everything local because I just don't, I don't know why I think to them they're like well I'm wasting my time it's not like going to the the you know the mainstream the big the big time events right because let it be known if i had if i knew you know if i knew chris rock or eddie murphy or somebody very popular trust me the tickets would be so completely so event bright we had the tickets on well months in advance and when i tell you literally the last day this event was on a saturday on friday we still had people uh uh calling us Saying, "Hey, look, uh, can I buy some tickets at the door? Can I, uh, can I uh, 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 cash app you this night? And don't worry, and, and I'm trust and believe. I'm forever grateful and just blessed that people still wanted to go. I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful. This is not a, sh this is not really a shot, but this is a more like a we have to do better 
okay like last minute it it it, it has my heart pounding it has it keeps it has my heart pounding so of course the week of i'm nervous making sure hey did we say how we doing are we doing how we looking this and, that and the other our goal i would say our goal was between i mean i'll just say our goal is between 100 <clears throat> 100 to 150 that's like just you know just to give you a, a magic number Y'all, we sold probably like 95 tickets, which was a huge blessing because this is one of our largest turnouts. Uh, because we we will um we have our uh our function, like we have a back to school drive which has a huge turnout, it's open to the public. Uh, I mean, well over 600 families on an average attend our back to school drives. Uh, we've had a few local, we've had maybe like four or five different uh local comedy series called Laughter for Tomorrow's Future Comedy Show. Um, those are usually eh. I would say 25 to 30 ish average crowd. We, we always could do better with that. Um, and then we, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. We did once we did another comedy show, but it was themed for the fathers more like a social so they can do a paint and sip this and any other. And it was, you know, it wasn't bad, but again, could improve. So I was very grateful for the turnout that this event, uh, had recently. And, um, uh, and uh, it was just, it was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, the the talent on the stage killed it. Our our host, Ashley Smith, who I will be having uh, as a guest on this show very soon, just working out uh, and, you know, working out in the schedule. Uh, but she she did an amazing job. Everyone did an awesome job. We're still getting calls about the event, man. So I just wanted to, you know, uh, you know, thank everyone who bought a ticket because, for one, your ticket is not going to waste uh is going for a great cause so i just again i thank you so so much and also um also just thank you for attending thank you for the turnout we hope to build, continue to build and build and build around um here in the hampton roads uh area uh with that and uh yeah i just had to i just had to point that out y'all all right uh what else what oh and another thing too <laughs> another thing so the day of the event your boy was having the bubble guts. I'll just say, I'll just be honest. Now, you know, TMI, here, TMI. No, no. I'm up front with you. You, my friends. I'm, we're family here. Uh, I had the bubble guts. And I always, I mean, I always get bubble guts when I'm very nervous. So I'm over here like, oh, uh, uh, uh. I, I probably went like twice uh, minutes before the, the show is officially about to start. We had amazing vendors as well uh, out there. I believe we had about five or six vendors. We had a local NAACP chapter that was doing voting registrations. Uh, the very own my my dear my new bestie, <laughs> a former state delegate, uh, Cheryl Turpin, who is currently running for Virginia Beach City Mayor. She attended and she actually so inside joke because a lot of people saying, "Aaron, why do you have animal crackers?" So she see right there. There we go. There we go. Um, I'm about to open this bag like after i finished the show but on on her show uh you know as she, she did the uh, huge announcement on the aaron to gavin show about her run for mayor of virginia beach which was awesome it was huge news and um and on, as a teacher because she is an educator she teaches it like advancement science uh, advancement environmental science and she said that uh she always you know welcome because like, she'll see a lot she'll encounter a lot of students that are going through a rough patch and always needs some form of just like uplifting right and so she said i always embrace him with a hug and a, and hey here get a get a scoop of get a cup of animal crackers so i'm like all right next time i see you now i'm gonna want that hug and i'm gonna want some animal crackers and she brought the bag and i'm just like oh snap i haven't had animal crackers in a long time by the way hey are you guys by the way are you guys team like frosted or unfrosted animal crackers because they do have two different ones they have like a ice like a frosted one and they have an unfrosted one i think i'm more team unfrosted but again i could i could be wrong so just wanted to get your uh, opinion on that um what else what else what else okay yes i forgot to do the regular intro so you are tuned into the aaron to gavin show we know we bring to you new episodes uh regular regularly uh 10 a.m every monday wednesday friday 10 a.m eastern standard time via uh via podcasts wherever you listen to your podcast whether that's iheart radio spotify apple odyssey let's see stitcher um we're on a platform called hey t-h-a-y-t-i it's a um it's a uh, a platform that is only consist in black content creators it's an app is free download it right now it's really dope so you'll see 
uh, my podcast, along with, say, podcasters like uh, Shannon Sharp with Club Shay Shay. The Black Effect Network is all on there. And all black uh, black content creators are, you know, predominantly ho- hosted by black people and people of color is all on that. So it's really dope. Um, so that's 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We drop new episodes Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, if you prefer to watch the video version of this show, you can check that out uh, at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. We drop the new video uh, portions of this show. No, the same exa- same exact days on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is R, the letter R, Smooth Club Media. Uh, and then also on Rumble at the Aaron T. Gavin Show. Uh, Facebook at R Smooth Club Podcast. On X, formerly known as Twitter, on RSC Media. And then also... Uh, if you you can check out reruns of this program every Saturdays and Sundays at 7 p.m. on ESP TV. So ESP TV on Facebook and then ErnestSmithProductions.com. You can check out reruns of that show. Uh, so, guys, a lot to go over today. A lot to go over today. Very excited to be joining you with another great episode here on the MT Gavin show. Look, we're going to do a quick commercial break, but don't go anywhere because we will be back. With more here on the Aaron Gamma Show. Yeah. Nina. See. God. Got a cut off from my team. Put on for my team. Yeah. Get ready for the ultimate music competition that will leave you on the edge of your seat. The full package, where the best of Virginia will battle it out to prove they have what it takes. Hello, we're your hosts. I'm Nina Nicole. And I'm LITS. In this thrilling competition, contestants will face electrifying challenges, testing their musical knowledge, skills, and creativity. You have one shot to prove you're the full package. Only the most exceptional performers will rise to the top and claim the title as the full package. Every note. Every move. Every beat. Counts. Counts. Who will have what it takes to become the ultimate music sensation and reign supreme as the full package? Don't miss the full package, where dreams are made and legends are born. Tune in for the most thrilling music competition of the year. Coming Coming soon soon to to your your screens. screens. The full package. This is great. Yeah. The choice and the texture and everything. Right. Mind blowing. I've never seen talent like this before. You've got the full package. What's going on? Welcome back to the Aaron Gavin Show. A uh, shout out to my friends over at the Full Package, Miss Michelle Young and Nina Nicole. Uh, they are the creators of a singing songwriting competition show that I was honored to be, uh, or I'm honored to be a part of. I serve as a backstage host. Uh, season one is in the works. Uh, it's uh, almost finished as far as with the uh, production, but we've already finished taping it, all that great stuff. So I'm very excited to can't wait to share with you the networks. So you can check that on uh, the network. You can check that on. But it was an awesome, awesome um, experience, man. We got to uh, I, well, at least I got to interact with a lot of independent artists, singers and songwriters that um, not even from the um, uh, f- Virginia area. People coming from Charlotte, people coming from the northern Virginia side. And um, it was awesome, man. Awesome. We had some great judges. Uh, Roberta Lee was one of our amazing judges. We had Dizzy the Host, who's an amazing MC here out in the area. We had uh, pro- uh, super producer uh, Hannon Lane. He works with uh, Missy Elliott, Timbaland, Teddy Riley, you name it, Madonna, Rihanna, uh, Jennifer Hudson. He's worked with them all. Um, and also Gunna Capo of G Unit. Uh, he's also served as a judge. We had a great turnout, man. And uh, I just can't wait to, for you to be a part of that. So I just had to, you know, of course, bl- shot them out as well. Uh, let's get it started with the first story. So the Marley Brothers, it was announced that the Marley Brothers will be going on a tour. Uh, it's called the, the Marley Brothers Unite for the Legacy Tour, a historic one of a kind outing celebrating Bob Marley's music influence and legacy. So I don't know if y'all have checked out the Bob Marley movie One Love, which I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little late. I need to check it out. I, I think it's on streaming platforms right now. But he has uh, 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 it was a very successful film. Um, it was a story about the uh, legend, the uh, Jamaican reggae singer, guitarist and songwriter Bob Marley, considered one of the pioneers of the genre. And he, he I mean, people to this day, I mean, you can't you cannot just vibe on 
Bob Marley's music. I mean, come on now. I mean, uh, 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 what was it? Um, one love, one lo- less. I mean, all of him, all of his music. Really, reggae is just feel good music, right? It's it's feel good. It's uplifting. It's upbeat. You can dance to it. Sometimes you can just sit back, vibe. You know, puffing on a little something, something. But you know, I ain't gonna really continue. You know, I I have partake. I haven't had any bad things about that. You know, I'm team. You know, team cannabis, right? You know, I, you know, hey, it's not it's nothing wrong with a little bit. Just don't overdo things. You know what I mean? Just don't overdo things. But. Uh, when I read about this, well, I read this article, and this is actually on, let me pull up the graphic for you all, who is watching, uh, give me one second, and pull this up, let me pull this up, because this is uh, r- from Live Nation, and it says, let's see, okay, Bob Marley's, okay, today, so the, the Marley brothers, Ziggy, Stefan, Julian, Kamani, and Damien announced the uh they've already announced it a while back but they announced the uh marley brothers the legacy tour their 22 date run produced by live nation which historically marks their first outing together in two decades y'all two decades the tour will commence on september 5th of this year at the festival lawn at deer lake park in vancouver uh british columbia then continues across the united the u.s and canada through the fall now bob marley's music endures as and this is reported by live nation uh as written bob marley's music endures as a beacon of strength hope and unity attracting a growing global fan base for over three decades his sons have each established themselves as renowned solo artists and collective boasts an impressive count of 22 grammy awards 22 y'all with Julian securing a 2024 win for best reggae album. So basically the the Marley the Marley family just taking over reggae music. They 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 own reggae music, let's be honest. All those Grammys. I was always familiar with Ziggy. Um let's see, let's see, let's see. Um and to kind of go back on Bob Marley man, if y'all didn't know, Bob Marley passed in 1981 at the age of 36. Uh I believe it was let me actually r- recall he passed from uh let's see let's see let's see let's see let's see um he passed from cancer it says after eight months of an alternate alternative treatment uh failing of effective effectively treat marley's advancing cancer he uh, so yeah so he passed away from cancer and at the age of 36 so very young gone too soon uh but again his music li- lives on so let me go back to this article uh from live nation uh it says here the let's see let's see let's see okay so now the the legacy tour they're honor their father's worldwide impact by performing both individual hits and classic bob marley songs during a, a momentous year for the genre as the world's as the world nears what would have been bob marley's 80th birthday in 2025 there's no greater homage than experiencing his music live through his sons who carry all his enduring influence across popular culture. Ain't that the truth, man? Ain't that the truth? Uh, let's see here. I want to see how many how many children did he have? I know Bob Marley had 11 kids, 11 kids. So I've already mentioned uh, Ziggy, Julian, Kamani, Damien, Stefan, Rohan. Rohan wasn't a musician, but he was a fam- he was an entrepreneur. Very popular in the sports world and also uh, famous of uh, being the, uh, uh, I believe, ex-husband of, oh, man, what's her, um, what, what is uh, from the Fugees, um, Lauren Hill. Woo, I, man, I would y'all would have had to <laughs> beat me up if I didn't remember that name, Lauren Hill. Uh, I think they have four kids, and Rohan also is a former uh, football player. He he was, I don't know if he played pro, but he did succeed on the collegiate level at the U, University of Miami. Uh, he was teammates with Warren Sapp, uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Ray Lewis, all those cats know uh, they go back very well, but uh, and he was, a, like I said, entrepreneur, businessman, um, but it's still very, probably has quite the knowledge in music, being that who, you know, the legacy comes from and things of that nature. Um, yeah, man. So I just wanted to I wanted to bring that up because I just think it's awesome the fact that Marley passed in 81. Bob Marley, I feel as though when it comes to generations, I like seeing young people 
embrace old school music. You know what I mean? Like people that have come way before them and or have might have never even uh have might have never even watched him in person or know know anything about him, but they're just like, Oh, I love this music, I love this music. And so I think it's very important that they continue that legacy so that so that uh people can always know, hey, look, this one didn't do it first. It was it was one guy and it was one guy only. So to me, reggae when when I when I if I if someone says the word, what, what's the first thing that comes to mind to reggae? Honestly, I'll say Bob Marley because his his picture. I mean, so many artists had covered or or, or music artists has covered his songs, or even like actual uh, artists like painters and 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 drawers have sketched out so many. There's so many Bob Marley posters and 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 big uh, what do you call it? Uh, portraits of him. Um, Jamaica will forever be that that they they love Marley is I mean it's everything and I remember there's an old movie called Shots Us which I think had one of the Marley either sons or grandsons was the lead actor in it and it was dope it was an historic film uh it, they probably didn't have a huge budget to make it but it was a very historic film I can talk I can watch it all the time and I watched it when I was in college with my buddies and things like that so very very cool very cool um I'm gonna digress from that y'all move on to the next story uh coming back home here uh, as you know i love 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 comedy my wife and i we probably attend more comedy shows than we do concerts i've been fortunate to have so many close friends that are comedians uh professional comedians i'm currently uh my company is the sponsor for season three this is our second season doing it, but this we're the sponsor for season three of a local show called Coast Comedy Live. So Coast Live is a lifestyle uh, talk show, which airs Monday through Fridays here in the Hampton Roads area, eastern, I think, eastern shore areas, some parts of the Carolinas. Um, it's a CBS affiliate show. It's on WTKR News 3, and it's hosted by uh, the, the uh, award-nominated journalist, April Woodard, a long-standing career veteran, uh, veteran journalist April Woodard, as well as uh, the funny man, the the rising star. I consider a, a dear friend, Mr. Chandler Nunley. Uh, this show, Coast Comedy Live, was helped establish by another local great comedian, uh, Quincy Carr. Who um, Quincy has a great resume in his own right. He's a regular comedian on all the, I believe, mostly Norwegian cruise ships. Uh, he's been in films. He hosts a local talk show here in the area as well called Living 757. Um, he's had a couple specials as well. Uh, let me see. Sirius XM, True TV, everywhere. You've seen him almost everywhere. And they created this show called Coast Comedy Live, which is a late night comedy showcase. Each episode has two comedians from either from the Virginia area or people from abroad. But they come here. They uh, a lot of them will have their TV debut and they I forgot how, I forget how many minutes they get, but they, you know, they showcase their comedy. Then towards the end, they actually have a sit down with the host to talk a little bit more about their story and things like that. So I'm, I, I, I say all that to just say I'm very passionate about comedy. I think comedy is the best medicine. I truly believe that it's a comedian, I, I, iconic comedian. George Wallace, he always says laughter is the best medicine. No one can. Uh, prescribe you no other better medicine besides laughter laughter you need laughter especially in our country right now um but i bring up this because here in the area we have uh two comedy clubs we have uh a virginia a, a born bred virginia one i think it's virginia's oldest comedy club called kazi's that's located in newport news virginia then you have a franchise uh comedy comedy uh comedy club called the Funny Bone. So over in Virginia Beach, Virginia, the Virginia Beach Funny Bone. Uh, there's, there's. I mentioned franchise. They have. I know they have one in Richmond, Virginia. I think they have one in the Philly area. They have one in certain other markets. Uh, but the Funny Bone has had so many mainstream. I mean, we've. I remember my first, my first comedian I got to see at the Funny Bone was Michael Blackson. Michael Blackson, you know, you mother, mother soccer. You know, the one with the the, the African accent. He was the first guy I saw. 
uh me and one of my best friends uh till this day one of my bros we went to go see him um i think uh i've seen him i've seen the late great john witherspoon i've seen george lopez i've seen dl hughley i've seen uh damon waynes senior and junior uh who else have i've seen oh man who else have i seen wow that's it's so many. Um, do, 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 do. oh, Sam J. We've seen Sam J. Uh, I'm gonna start finding a list. I gotta, I gotta actually start gathering a list of people that we've seen at the Funny Bone because we've seen so many until it's not. Oh, Michael Collier. We see Michael Collier there. Uh, I've seen. I've come there to see local acts because, like I said, I have a lot of friends that are local comedians. Which the Funny Bone actually needs to continue to do a little bit better. On bringing in local acts, I know they have some regulars that work there. Shout out to my uh, my bro, Big Vino. Um, he goes on tour a lot uh, with uh, with prominent comedians in the you know in the in the in the, in the industry. Uh, yeah, they. Uh, uh, oh, Angus Black. He's a local local icon. I know he's performed there many times. Uh, he's opened up. Man, I'm, he opened up for Pat LaBelle the last time I saw Angus. Man, I'm like, God dang. Let me open up for Patty, Patty, Patty. Uh, I don't know why I did that. Just you, you have to. Ever since that whole viral video with the man eating a Patty, the the sweet potato pie. But um, okay. So I I bring up this because the Funny Bone is actually expanding in the Virginia area. So the Pembroke Mall uh is starting to go under renovation, and the Funny Bone will be moving into the Pembroke Mall in a much larger. A much larger venue. Now they've been at in Town Center, where they're located at. I believe they've been there for about twenty years. So this is reported by Wavy TV Ten, uh, an NBC affiliate news uh, platform here in the Hampton Roads area. Uh, let's see. It's reported reported by written by uh, Brian Reese. It says here for GB's Funny Bones Comedy Club is moving nearby and adding and adding a draft cade as part of a major redevelopment for the former Pembroke, Pembroke Mall. The move next July will come 20 years after the chain opened at Town Center in Virginia Beach. Now, the Funny Bone Vice President Todd uh, Lennonbatch says the deal was the new Pembroke Square, where the new Pembroke Square will keep the club in Virginia Beach for two more decades. We love the Town Center, and we love to stay. We loved to stay. The problem was they just didn't have any space for us to expand the make to make a bigger showroom and add a the draft cage said we we just needed to grow and keep those big names coming for another 20 years. And they do get big names. They get names like I mean, oh, Andrew Schultz. I mean, I've, I lucked up seeing we saw Andrew Schultz. We saw. Uh, uh. You you uh you have Monique attend there multiple times. I've already said Dio Hughley, Sinbad's performed. I mean, literally everybody you can think of has come to the Funny Bone. They have come to the Funny Bone. Um, who else? Who else? Uh, Tim Meadows, Lunell. Uh, I, I can keep on going on and on. Uh, but it says here the new space across Virginia Beach Boulevard at Pembroke Mall is set to open in August twenty twenty five. And will increase the current seating compa seating capacity for the club's showroom from about 300 seats to roughly 450. Okay, uh, the VP said the added capacity will help bring even bigger names. Past acts of the club included, like I mentioned, Sinbad, Monique, Craig Robinson, Stevo, and Burke Chrysler. Oh, I, I forgot Burke was up. So, uh, so this is an awesome, awesome deal uh, because. Draft case obviously makes it more appealing, adds more pizzazz to it. Um, I personally don't mind, uh, which a lot of people can't stand. When you actually attend the current Funny Bone right now, they love to pinch, you know, bring people together. So, like, if if you can order either a table for two people, or uh, you can order a full table of uh, of for a four. But if you come with two, most likely they're gonna they're gonna sit you to a full person table with two other strangers. And a lot of people really don't like being, you know, with new people. Now, me, I'm different because I love people, right? I, I enjoy making new friends. That's just me. But for those who are not too interested, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes my, my wife is not too fond with that. I I have a lot of friends that are not too fond of that. And uh it's funny seeing reaction to people that 
maybe not be familiar with the funny bone or is new to the funny bone they're like ooh, can we um can we kind of is there another seat i mean we 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 got the vip we got the this we got that why we have to be so close to each other y'all it's a comedy show have some fun make friends everybody's gonna be laughing anyway um and it looks good on uh videos and you know it's great for the comedians to see all that too um uh, let's see here let's see here um in addition okay they will combine the new DraftKate next door, which will have 48 craft beers, taps, and more than 40 classic arcade games like Pac-Man and Galaga. The Funny Bones overall footprint will grow from the 8,000 square feet at the current location to 20,000 square feet. Okay, okay. This is pretty dope. I'm, 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 I'm really intrigued with this. Shout out to um shout out to VB making that making that happen. That's actually pretty pretty dope because one thing I don't know if you notice in your areas, ladies and gents, uh, when it comes to malls, malls brick and mortar is really starting to crumble now. I've seen it firsthand because I'm a business owner. Um, I my product is is retail, right? It's it's ready for retail. Um, but I've started off online retail. i probably will stay like that for a good while. But my goal is to open a retail space. And you're probably like saying, Aaronson, why? If you if you're noticing a a, a a a fail with brick and mortar stores, look, I am seeing a fail of brick and mortar, but they are still a lot of people that rather shop in person than the shop online. Okay, I feel as though if we continue to encourage people to just say, okay, shop online will be your only option. I mean, when are you ever gonna get some? Uh, uh, when are you gonna ever get sunlight? When are you ever gonna come outside and just? It's just. The whole atmosphere, the whole vibe of shopping when you're out and about, it's it's my, it's just it's something freeing about just oh I love going. Uh, they call it, like ladies will say retail therapy. Oh girl, I need to have some retail therapy. <laughs> I've heard that so many times, but I, I still believe that you know retailers can still push as long as they know how to go with the times, right? Incorporate online, uh, online options as well as retail. So that's where I'm leaning towards. I never would say I would start retail first i started with online first we are on multiple online outlets uh walmart online amazon etsy of course our website ruggedevil.com and so much so many other online retailers but i i will say i would love to have just a nice quaint brick and mortar store uh located in a nice air you know nice part of town of course uh but coming back to the story coming back to malls malls are really you know fumbling i don't think malls are really going to be in the future anytime soon maybe i don't know you might see an adjust i mean they probably still be here in the, you know in the next 20 years but they will slow it will be less if they were i think they will keep on dropping in numbers um a lot of malls i see now are starting to do uh renovate it into like apartments and restaurants at the bottom or uh apartments and entertainment at the bottom or restaurants and entertainment is they're all trying to jazz it up and turn it into something else uh, but uh, we will see. We will see what occurs. Um, again, shout out to the city of Virginia Beach. Shout out to the Virginia Beach Funny Bones. Shout out to Pembroke Mall, making all that happen. I can't wait to check that out. I can't wait to go to the grand opening of the first show. I, I'm curious who's going to be opening, uh, be the first comedian in that new location. That will be another exciting thing. I can't wait to see that. But um, until then, we're going to do another, we're going to do a quick commercial break, y'all. Uh, but when we come back, we will stay within the entertainment realm and music and talk about a certain artist that ooh, is really pissing off a lot of uh, ticket go or excuse me, people who have bought tickets to see this lady. So when we come back more here on the Aaron to Gavin show, don't go anywhere and please don't change that dial. We'll, we, we will be back. Become a man of distinction with Rugged Evolution Beard Care. Order our scented beard oils and beard balms to help you maintain and grow the perfect beard. Order today. Try our men's care products like the Full Body Exfoliating Cleansing Bars, Body Wash, Smooth Stash, and more. Log on to our website or download our app to place your orders. Rugged Evolution Beard Care. We're your luxury but affordable men's care line. And remember, Rugged is the new smooth. That's right. Welcome back to the Aaron to Gavin show. Um, look, y'all, lately, iconic singer Miss Anita Baker has been in the news, not for really good reason. It's been a lot. I mean, I will say it's been a lot of like, 
ooh, ouch, why, what is going on? <laughs> you know, responses, right? I remember she was supposed to go on a tour with Babyface. That ended real quick. Uh, some issues happened with that, and then Babyface is no longer part of that ticket. Uh, there was a moment where Anita was uh, arguing back and forth, I think, with a fan during one of her performances. Um, there was another one that said she was late coming on the stage, and I'm like, please, Anita, do not. You must have been talking to Lauren Hill t- <laughs> of uh, too much of getting advice to her what concert. Don't do that. Don't do that because a lot of people they they say Mm-mm. that's they 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 will still listen to your music, but as far as attending a live concert, they will not. So Anita Baker, the lovely Miss Anita Baker, 66 years of age. Uh, I guess you can say jazz R&B vibe that she's always been known for. You're my angel. Um, what is another one of her hits? Let me try and find. She said, you're my angel. And why is my, there we go. Uh, sweet love. She's a grant. She's what is she winning? Yep. She is. She's one Grammy. She's won. Oh, excuse me. Eight Grammys four platinum albums. So quite, you know, quite the uh, legendary soul jazz. There we go. Soul jazz, soul, soulful, and R and B is her genre. But this is an article um I've actually um pulled up from one of the local circuits. I think out in the Atlanta area. Uh, Anita Baker concert goers upset that Atlanta concert was canceled at the last minute. So uh, before I will read more about this article, let me go ahead and pull up this video for you all to listen to. About one of those from those one of those concert goers that went on social media to share their frustration about how they felt. Let me see, is this the one I want to get for you? Give me one second. Yep. Pull that up for you. Give me one second. And uh, there we go. I'm pissed. Anita bald headed ass. They canceled the concert. I've been waiting for her since January. And her bald headed ass canceled the concert. Look at that. We all stand out here ready. Ready? Wait. And her bald headed ass canceled the concert. All right. All right. So, uh, <laughs> as you see right there, let me go ahead and take that graphic off. It's getting, getting kind of aggressive. Yikes. So that concert girl obviously was not satisfied with uh, the fact that Anita Baker canceled her concert minutes. When I say minutes uh, before the concert was supposed to start. So here's the article from one of the local outlets here, uh, local outlets in the Atlanta area. Uh, This was reported by. Let me see. Let me see. Um, What is okay? This is report. Let me pull this up. 11 11 alive.com 11 8 yeah 11 a live.com uh it says here a concert featuring eight time grammy award winning artist anita baker is in atlanta uh on saturday night was canceled at the last minute due to uh unforeseen circumstances according to officials with live nation an evening with anita baker was set to begin at 7 p.m. at the State Farm Arena, but was canceled shortly be- uh, beforehand. The reason why is still unknown. Now, concertgoers will be refunded for the cost of their tickets, officials said. Um, it's unclear if they if the concert will be rescheduled. Now, un- unhappy uh, customers, one concertgoer posted on X saying, uh, I think that might be the same one, saying, so mom's Mother's Day present w- uh, was tickets to the anita baker concert tonight and after making us stand there for over 30 minutes wow standing there for over 30 minutes after doors were supposed to open they just canceled the concert outright i feel bad for the arena staff though because people are not happy after baker's concert last year moved tiffany castello to tears move uh tiffany castle to tears she says she was looking forward to this year's concert as a mother's day gift for her mother-in-law castle said she found out the concert was canceled when she had already paid for parking 
She even spent extra money to get floor seats. Whew. And those floor seats ain't cheap, y'all. Let me tell you something. Music concerts are not cheap. Um, Caslo said, Caslo said the cancellation should have come earlier. It and she quotes, it would have been definitely it, excuse me, it would have been definitely been better to know prior to leaving the house that the concert would be canceled or if there was the possibility that it might be canceled castle said we would not have gone through the trouble of of her traveling fortunately atlanta united had a game going on tonight we managed to grab last minute tickets not front row but behind the home bench we had a great time it wasn't a win but those games are super fun Kudos to Castillo. Um, another person, uh, well, well, going back to Castillo, she still said, hey, look, this is not going to kill my joy. This is not going to ruin my time. We're still going to have a great time, Mom. No worries. We will find that's another great thing about the Atlanta area because there's so much great things in, you know, prominent metro areas like Atlanta. Atlanta has concerts. You have music. There's always something to do. That's what I That's what I love about Atlanta as well. Um Another person posted on social media saying Anita Baker's show in Atlanta just got canceled and the aunties out here are not happy. It's me. I'm the aunties. Um, one other person, one other post on social media uh, said, girl, not Anita Baker canceled on Atlanta. And they're saying she not even in the state. <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me either. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, Christina Johnson bought tickets to the concert for her and her mother for Mother's Day. She said her mother was a lifelong Anita Baker fan and bought tickets the day they went on sale back in March. Back in March, y'all. So we're in May, back in March. Johnson said that she was one of the first fans in line, but she found out the concert was canceled when someone came outside State Farm Arena just before 6, 6.40 p.m. and told them there wouldn't be a concert uh, Saturday night. Now, you know, what's unfortunate too, y'all because someone at uh, Anita Baker's age, she's 66 years old. The older, I, one thing I've noticed a lot of the older performers, they normally don't have opening acts. They don't go on too many tours with a bunch of people. It's normally just like a one night boom with that individual. So I, I, I say all that because I, um, I gifted tickets for my mom, my aunts, um, I went with my, uh, I had a cousin and my wife. We all went to go see Paula Bell. Um, she's been to the Hampton Roads area uh, many a times in concert, puts on a great show. Um, she she did not have any opening singer. She Now, her opening act was a comedian. Uh, I mentioned before, Angus Black. He did a great job. I think he maybe did like 15 minutes, maybe 20. I'm not sure how long he was on stage. But Paula Bell was just an hour and 30 because Paula Bell is 79 years old. She looks great for her age. But she's like, look, I ain't trying to be out all night with y'all. I gotta, I gotta perform. I still gotta travel and do this other show. I'm tired. So she did her thing. But a lot of the older performers, they normally don't come with a crowded lineup. That's just them and them only. Now, younger people, younger people will say, "Okay, look, uh, it's me along with five others, or you know, four other people." I remember my very first, uh, one of my very first concerts as a kid. I, uh, it was an Alicia Keys concert, and it was. The newly just, you know, just crowned American Idol winner, Jordan Sparks and Neo. Attended the show. It turned out that Jordan Sparks wasn't going to be attending because she was sick. You still had Neo and Alicia Keys. Now, no, you know, no shade to Jordan Sparks. But at the time, she was an upcoming artist. She just won American Idol. So it wasn't like it was a lot of huge fans that were saying, oh, my goodness, I just came here to see Jordan Sparks, and that was it. No, 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 no. Neo and Alicia Keys was still a very great. They were like the you know you know you almost could have said co headliners, but I mean it was uh, I think Alicia Keys no one um album that she had, and it was I mean it was an amazing concert. She had a great time. Um, a recent concert my wife and I went to was oh man I forgot the the title of it, but it was Ashanti was the headliner and Drew Hill um had performed before her. Uh, I think they said Jagged Edge was supposed to be performing, but they didn't show up. And a lot of people was unaware. They found out like the day, like at the concert, like where is Jagged Edge like not coming? Like, what's up? What's up? So. uh, So. 
I wasn't, you know, I, I still had a great time. Uh, personally, no, and and again, this is I'm not trying to cause any shade to anybody, but Drew Hill to me was like I would have loved to see them as a headliner rather than Ashanti. Ashanti has his. Don't get me wrong; she's truly she's a talented woman. Wrote a lot of songs, won Grammys as a writer. Um, but eh, it was just it was so much energy with Drew Hill. You had dancing, you had a you know they were going acapella, they were doing this, they were doing that. Then of course you know Cisco had to you know end it off with his thong song, right? That that. Uh, you know, a uh, hit song, and then you have Ashanti really kind of slowing it up, vibing and stuff. So it wasn't. Eh. You got to know your crowd. You got to know your crowd, and this is why I enjoy comedy. I love comedy because, for one, tickets are not crazy expensive like a concert. Now, depending on who you see, because I will say, Dave Chappelle, I know has some expensive ass concerts. Chris Rock has some expensive ass concerts. Uh, 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 Kevin Hart, all the top tier. If you're if they are performing in a Madison Square Garden or a football stadium, they, they are expensive, right? They are expensive. Cat Williams, I know, is pretty pricey. Um, but, you know, if you go to, like, you know, small, intimate uh, 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 intimate comedy clubs, man, you know, you're not spending, you know, too much. I think uh, – I, I, well, I can't remember how much I spent on DL, but it was worth it, though. But, I mean, you might be spending, like, a max of 60-plus per ticket, maybe to 80 per ticket, right? But concerts now, they're, like, looking at damn near – I don't know, two over two hundred dollars. I and you know, I I'll be damn. I'm not. I will not do no Beyonce concert or no T, T Swifts or any of the because they are they are too expensive. I can't. No, I can't. We supposed to be. We look. Everybody keep on talking about prices that's too high and this and that. And I barely can pay my rent, but yet you can go to a freaking um concert. Uh, uh that is an average of two twenty five per ticket. Give me a break, y'all. Yeah, look, people. We have to be smart when it comes to cons- consumer intelligence. <laughs> okay, we have to be smart when it comes to consumer intelligence. I hear a lot of people say, "Yeah, I'm I'm late on my rent, but I I'm on my way. I gotta catch this flight to Dubai. I'm going I'm going to turn up with my girlfriends or with my with my homeboys in uh, over you know in Dubai or Mexico and this and the other." I see. Look, I see a lot of my friends. I see a lot of my friends on these luxury trips. All right, and I'm like, all right now, y'all do y'all do a lot of trips, but how's the uh, you know? Where the funds coming from? Because I know sometimes be the funds be scratching, the them hands, them hands be sweating. All right, trying to trying to uh, look see see where the next dollar coming. But y'all over here doing these luxury concerts. But uh, <laughs> I, I I always love to like rant off and stuff. But um, honestly, my take on this is Anita, 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 Anita. I hope everything is okay. I hope you are well. I hope nothing you know. Uh, like an emergency had occurred. I just, you know, if it was something when it comes to negotiation issues or something like that, handle that after the concert because you have to realize people sacrifice to see you. Okay, people sacrifice. People, people look forward to, especially if they pay if they bought their ticket in March. I mean, months in advance, and then you cancel at the last minute. I mean, what was so bad for them to cancel at the last minute? Like that's what kills me. Like, okay, say say it was canceled the the day or the week before, but the last minute, y'all. Like, come on now, come on. If that continues to be a regular thing, Anita, trust and believe, you're gonna start losing some fans because people were looking at uh, Lauren Hill funny showing up late. You you know, uh, really not singing her. You know, not uh, coming in late and not really uh, uh, finishing out a full concert because she will come out late. And then just say if the concert says this concert will be from six to ten, I showed up at uh, eight o'clock and I'm still going to finish at ten o'clock. Like, no, no, no. You got people. Get, you got to get people their money's worth. Because y'all tickets are not cheap. OK, y'all are not cheap. And I mean, is it just is it the fact that you uh, divas like what is it, man? Anyway, as I digress, uh, we're going to do another quick commercial break. But when I come back, um with some more on these uh, college protests because, as you know, it was get graduation season. And over in a Virginia University, VCU, recently, Governor Glenn Youngkin was the commencement speaker. And I'll just say, you know, he didn't have the reaction that he, I guess, he wish he could have. <laughs> we'll be back with more here on the Aaron T. Gavin Show. Don't go anywhere. Do not change that dial. We'll be back.
All right, y'all. Welcome back here to the Aaron to Gavin show. Look, as I was mentioning before, recently at the VCU uh, Virginia Commonwealth University graduation, commencement speaker was uh, none other than Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin. Let me bring up this quick video for you and see uh, what I'm basically going to be sharing with you all. Let me pull up that graphic and we're going to have a conversation about it, y'all. We don't we don't talk about it. So, as you saw, graduates walking out while Governor Youngkin was talking. Uh, that was actually uh, off the, the DMV Daily, reported by the DMV Daily, which uh, will show a lot of uh, uh, stories, news, and things happening in the, the DMV, the Maryland, Virginia, D.C. area. Uh, an article I pulled up from the Washington Post report on that. VCU students walk out of commencement. Uh, uh, excuse me, walk out of commencement during Youngkin's address. Now, VC, it shows here VCU students who walked out said that they were demonstrating support for Palestinians and protesting some of the Republicans' governors, excuse me, for some of the Republican governors' crusade against efforts to promote racial equity in education. Um, says here, dozens of uh, VCU students walked out of their graduation ceremony Saturday morning as Governor Youngkin delivered the commencement address, demonstrating support of the Palestinians and protesting some Republican crusades against efforts to promote racial equity in education. The selection of Yunkin as speaker drew criticism from some of, excuse me, some ahead of the ceremony. The university's chapter of the NAACP this week urged VCU officials to, uh, let's see, resign the invitation and some students in recent days said they would hold a walkout during the ceremony. Now on Saturday, attendees at the commencement were given cards congratulating the graduates class, but warning that anyone who disrupted the ceremony was subjected to removal. Now I remember back when I was in college, y'all, they said, look, anything y'all do, anything y'all do, I'm telling you, we are going to, uh, uh, you're not gonna walk. You're not gonna walk. You're not gonna. It was. They were threatened. They said, "Look, any issues y'all cause, I'm telling you, y'all will not walk across. Meaning, you will not get your uh your diploma, and we'll 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 see what happens from there." And so I'm curious. All those because it was a lot. Of, I mean, I counted well over 25 people. It probably been hundreds of people that walked. So that was a lot of people. I'm wondering, do they still get their diplomas, or did they do it after? I mean, because he was the commencement speaker, so they didn't yet cross the stage yet. So what would occur? What's going to happen with them, right? So uh, as I uh, re uh, go back to the article of the Washington Post, as Yonke began his speech, dozens of graduates in the excuse me in attendance filed out of the Greater Richmond Convention Center, mostly in silence. Some holding confetti scarves, as oh excuse me, some holding mm, cafe cafe scarves and signs aloft. Teach Black History. Yes, Teach Black History, one read. Book bans uh, do not equal respect for learning. Read another. Hey, on that aspect, I, I really don't disagree with that because here's my thing. If if anybody is in 
agreements with the book banning, with uh, uh, with the ending of black history in schools. To me, I'm sorry. I'm against you on that one because in order for us to grow as a culture, uh, uh, excuse me, grow as um, uh, uh, the, a human race, grow as a community, grow as just in general. See, the more you know, the more you grow. If you're preventing certain knowledge, then guess what? You're not up for change. You're not up for what's going on with the time. So why is it that people don't want to learn about black history? Okay. You keep on saying that. I don't want my kid to feel bad. Who says they're feeling bad? They didn't live in that era. We're teaching history, the good and the bad that what, what goes on in the U S people always get butt hurt when they always want to talk about anything involving race. We're not talking it to cause arguments. We're just saying, look, this is what occurred. Here's what we can always continue to do to help remove that. We want to we want to erase that. Excuse me, not erase, but we want to prevent issues like that that happened in the past from happening now and in the future to come. But a lot of people don't want to hear that mess. And those who don't want to hear it, to me, are part of the problem. I digress. Let me go back to this. Uh, the protest did not disrupt the program, though an initial uh, burst of applause for the protesters briefly drowned um, out the governor's speech. Youngkin pressed on with his address which included a tribute to his late mother and an extended symphony metaphor. The world needs your music, he said. Spokesman for VCU and the governor's office declined to comment on the walkout. More than 4,700 VCU student graduates this, this spring. About 3,000 of, the, uh, of them uh, were undergrads. Um, in, in, ah, excuse me. It is a diverse student body representing 40 countries, more than 900 were first generation college students, VCU said ahead of the ceremony, adding to tensions on Saturday. The ceremony came out, came about two weeks, uh, two weeks after police used pepper spray to disperse a crowd of pro Palestinian demonstrators on VCU's campus. 13 people, including six students, were arrested. Uh, I will read a little more about this and uh, promote more of this on our social media. Uh, we got a couple minutes left until the show. I want to. Uh, go through uh, go through another story. I will come back to this on my social media on our smooth club media. We'll uh, talk more about this walkout that happened at VCU. Um, but I want to bring this up before uh, we end the show. I don't know if you guys saw this, but over in Miami Beach, they were just promoting the world's first Rolls Royce police car. All right, I kid you not. I kid you not. Let me go ahead and pull this up for you as we're getting closer. To the end of this show, watch me all see this. I'm. I let me tell you something. I I thought I saw it all, but let me tell y'all this. Let me see here. Oop. Make sure that graphics up there for you guys. Um, and it's tough. It's 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 nice. I will say. Can y'all can y'all see that? Look at that bad boy. Look at that. Woo. Woo. Do you see that? That is crazy. For those who are watching, you can uh, see um, I have the uh, uh, video of the, the Rose Royce police vehicle. Um, but I'll read the article uh, written by, excuse me, reported by the uh, Miami Herald. Um, says here, Miami Beach police just got a new Rolls Royce. Who's paying for it? That's a damn good question. <laughs> I will say, who is paying for this? Because are these taxpayers money paying for a, 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 a Rolls Royce police car? Why why do you need a Rolls Royce? Uh, uh, let me let me continue the story. Okay, Miami Beach, Miami police. Excuse me, Miami Beach police caused a stir Thursday when they unveiled their latest recruitment tool, a Rolls Royce, tricked out to look like one of the department cop cars. In a social media post, the department said the ultra the ultra luxury car was part of Brahmin Motors fleet, and that the dealership had sponsored all cost associates with the project okay well that's good to know uh but that didn't stop people from raising questions i don't think this is a good look for the police department one per one person commentator on instagram this is where all the money goes to huh another person reported uh the department's the department's public information office the public ah, the public Ah, why well, I can't get my words right. The department's public information officer, Christopher Best, told the Miami Hero taxpayers haven't covered any costs related to the vehicle and that because it 
is part of the Brahmin's fleet. The dealership will pay for maintenance. The car is on a loan, is on loan to the department and will re be returned. Uh, will be returned, he said. Uh, so, okay. It's, it seems like they're trying to save their tails because obviously people are not too uh, happy about the fact that there's a Rolls Royce police car roaming the streets in Miami Beach. I'm still pretty confused on that. Um, it says here that uh, a 2012 Rolls Royce Ghost originally priced at 250, valued at two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Um, so I could imagine this being a new current year when how much that costs. Uh, but still very interesting. Why? Why is it like? I mean, I, I can understand like you know you get a newer year vehicle on your cars, but a Rolls Royce, come on now, and it's tricked out. It's a little odd, a little odd. Uh, but anyway, y'all. Look, I hope y'all enjoyed another <laughs> great episode here on the Aaron T. Gavin Show. Be sure to tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time. If you prefer to watch, if you prefer to listen to this show, we drop new episodes those exact days. You see scrolling at the bottom, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, uh, 10 a.m. via podcast. Wherever you listen to your podcast, iHeart Radio, Odyssey, Spotify, Apple. You name it, wherever you listen to your podcast, you can tune into the Arrington Gavin Show. All you have to do is just you can type in the Arrington Gavin Show or you can type in our Smooth Club Media. You can find us under that hub. Um, uh, if you prefer to watch the video version of this show, you can do so by tuning into our Smooth Club Media at 5 p.m. Uh, on our YouTube channel, our Smooth Club Media. Also, 5 p.m. on Rumble at the Arrington Gavin Show, uh, Facebook, our Smooth Club Podcast, and um, our ex, formerly known as Twitter page rsc media and no worries you can check out reruns of the show on saturdays and sundays at 7 p.m on esp tv esp tv on facebook as well as ernest Smith productions.com y'all and this is actually new too we're gonna i'm gonna let that ticker kind of scroll down a little bit i've put uh uh our cash app down at the scroll of this screen if you like what you're listening to or if you like what you're tuning into and you would love to contribute to the program Please, uh, you know, you can do a penny, you can do 10 cents, you can do a dollar. I'm not asking for huge amounts when it comes to donation, but anything you have, uh, I truly appreciate that because what we're trying to do here, we're a very independent grassroots program. And a lot of that money could go to, you know, a buildup of equipment, a better studio, access to get more great uh, interviews with some great people and things of that nature. So, again, you don't have to give if you don't want to, but I just put it down there. Uh, just, you know, just a way to say, hey, look, if you like what you listen to, if you like what you're tuning into, please, uh, you can uh, tune in. You can uh, donate right there, as, as you see at the bottom. So I truly appreciate that. Uh, if you can, if you don't, I truly understand. But I love you anyway, because, hey, you support this program and please continue to support this program by subscribing, hitting the like button, sharing with people, giving us five stars on the podcast platforms. I truly appreciate that. Until next time, my friends. Uh, y'all be blessed. Stay easy. Stay safe out there. Uh, be kind to one another and all that great stuff. All right, I'm out. Y'all take care.